What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example. What we gotta do is take these quadratics here, we have to find the vertex of them, and then we have to sketch the graph. So, a couple of things I wanna mention here. Notice that all of these quadratics, they are in standard form. So in order to find the vertex, what we're gonna do is we're going to take the standard form, convert it to vertex form by completing the square. And notice that these particular quadratics, all the A values are one. In the completing the square overview video, if you remember, I mentioned that there are two cases. You could either have an A value of one or an A value that's not one. And if it's not one, it's gonna be a little bit more complex of a process. There's a couple of more steps to do when completing the square. But when the A value is one, there are less steps. So in this particular video, we're gonna focus on an A value of one, but in the next video, we'll do the case where the A value won't be one. So we get more practice with those types of situations. So basically all of these quadratics, because the A value is just one, all of them are gonna be opening up. They're all gonna have a minimum point, a minimum vertex. Now, from the standard form, remember what is the easiest characteristic to get of the quadratic? It's the y-intercept. It's always gonna be the C value because if we start off with the first quadratic, how can we get the y-intercept of anything, we plug in zero for x. So if we plug in zero for x, notice this goes to zero, this goes to zero, we end up with a y-value of 10, which is just the c-value. So that's gonna happen for all of them. So in a standard form quadratic, the c-value is always the y-intercept. And so we'll include the y-intercept along with the vertex for each of our graphs, just to make it a little bit more specific. So. Let's write that down first for the first quadratic. So we'll have zero and 10 as the y-intercept. And so let's grab the vertex now, and let's do that with completing the square, putting this standard form quadratic into a vertex form quadratic. So first thing we do Notice because we have an A value of one, we don't have to worry about taking anything out, factoring out that A value from the first two terms. And so we can go straight into using that formula that we went through in the overview video where we take that B value divided by two and then square it. So we could take the six in this case, divided by two, square that, that would be three to the power of two, which would give us nine. And then what do we do? We add that value, subtract that value, and then we got that plus 10 at the end, right? So this is still the same thing. It's like we're adding zero over here. We're just adding more things because plus nine minus nine is just zero. So it does still end up being that quadratic. But the reason why we want to do that is because now these three terms will always factor into a perfect square trinomial. And when you factor this over here, you'll end up with x plus three squared like that. The pattern is, is that this value is always gonna be half of that value. And then this sign is gonna carry over here. It's not always gonna be a positive. You'll see here we have a negative, negative. So then this is gonna end up being a negative. But if you don't wanna sort of remember those types of rules, you could just remember that this over here, this quadratic, when you factor it, it's always gonna be a perfect square trinomial. And then we're gonna have negative nine plus 10, which would give us positive one, like that, right? So we end up with that quadratic. So this quadratic and this quadratic, they are the exact same thing. They are just in different formats. If you took this in, graphed it on Desmos, took this and graphed it on Desmos, you'd see it be the exact same quadratic. But now what's nice about this quadratic is we can get the vertex. What's the vertex going to be? It's going to be negative three and positive one, like that, right? Sometimes these kinds of questions will ask you for a maximum or a minimum value. And because these quadratics are opening up, we have a minimum value and it's usually the y value of the vertex. So you could also say that this quadratic has a minimum value of positive one. Okay, so that is enough 
information right there to make a rough sketch of this quadratic. So vertex negative three, positive one. So that's like right here. And then we'll have zero and 10 as the y-intercept right there. And so we end up with a quadratic like that. Right, just a nice quick um, graph sketch right there. Right, so now moving on to part B. Again, first thing, let's get the y-intercept, just the c-value, we'll have zero, negative three. Let's get the vertex, so we'll take this quadratic, we'll complete the square on it, change it to vertex form, a value is one, so we could go straight into just taking that B value, dividing it by two and squaring it, which would give us 16, four to the power of two is 16. So we'd have X squared plus eight X plus 16 minus um, 16 minus three, like that. And then we factor this over here, which would be a perfect square trinomial. Negative 16 minus 13 would give us negative 19. Okay, so this quadratic, this quadratic, exact same thing. And then the vertex here, we could tell it's negative four and negative 19. Remember this, it's always gonna be the opposite sign of that. When we worked with vertex form quadratics, we went through that in many examples. All right, so we got a vertex over here. We have y-intercept here. There's a minimum value of negative 19 in case they ask for that. And so making a quick sketch of this, we'll have negative four, let's say negative 19 is like down here. And then we got zero, negative three for the y-intercept like that, All right? So it ends up, ends up being a quadratic that looks something like that, roughly. Okay, if you took this, uh, graphed it in Desmos, you'd end up with um, a sketch that looks like that. Moving on to part C, same thing. Uh, we got the C value of two, so we know we got a y-intercept of zero and two, and then we got x squared minus four x plus two. Okay, so from here, Again, the A value is one. We don't have to worry about taking anything out from the first two, so we can go straight into taking that B value, which is negative in this case, dividing it by two, and then squaring it. That would give us negative two to the power of two, which would give us positive four. Right, this here, it's always gonna be a positive value because whether this bracket ends up being positive or negative, when you square it, it'll end up being positive. And so from there, what we could do is x squared minus 4x, we go plus 4 minus 4 plus 2. This will be a perfect square trinomial. In this case, there will be a negative over here, right? For these two, it, uh, this portion, the sign there was a positive. Here it is negative. Then we got negative 4 plus 2, which would give us negative 2. All right, so this quadratic, that quadratic, they're the exact same thing. Okay, and we could see what is the vertex of it, negative two, or no, sorry, positive two, right? We do the opposite sign and then negative two. And so making a sketch of this graph, so we'll have positive two, negative two, that'll be the vertex right here. And then we'll have a y-intercept of zero and two, which would be up here. So we end up having a quadratic that looks something like that, right? This is that graph. Moving on to part D, we got y equals x squared minus 20x plus five. So again, we got the C value there. Let's just get that y-intercept while we can. And to get the vertex, let's take that standard form. Let's um, change it to vertex form with completing the square. Uh, so what we can do, because the A value is one, we can go straight into taking that B value, dividing it by two, squaring it, negative 10 to the power of two gives us 100. So we'd end up with X squared 
minus 20x plus 100 minus 100 plus 5 like that. These two, or uh, sorry, these three, perfect square trinomial. Negative 100 plus 5 would give us negative 95 like that. Uh, so the vertex we could tell from here, it's going to be positive 10, opposite sign, and then this negative 95 like that. All right, so we've got the vertex, got the y-intercept. Let's make a sketch over here. Just a quick rough one. Uh, let me think, let's put the axis up here. So we'll go 10 negative 95, that's like here, zero and five for the y-intercept. Let's extend this a bit. We end up getting a quadratic that looks like that. Okay, these aren't the best sketches, but if you wanna make a more proper sketch, maybe on graph paper, you can. I'm just showing you just roughly how this quadratic is going to look like. This video, it's more so about uh, practicing the completing the square process. Okay, and then moving on to part E, I think we're gonna actually work with decimals here. So C value is one, so that's the y-intercept. Let's take a standard form, convert it to vertex form. So notice here, A value is one, don't need to worry about taking anything out. Take that B value divided by two, square it. So we'd have 2.5 to the power of two, which would give us 6.25. So we'd end up with X squared plus five X plus 6.25 minus 6.25 plus one like that. This over here, X plus 2.5 squared, right? This is gonna factor into this over here. And maybe when you're working with decimals like this, it helps to remember that this value is always gonna be half of this value. So five divided by two is 2.5, and then this sign, that sign are always gonna be the same, right? This over here factors into that, and then negative 6.25 plus one would give us negative 5.25 like that. So the vertex, would end up being negative 2.5, opposite sign, and negative 5.25, like that. Um, just give me a sec here. Yes, looks all good to me, right? So this quadratic, this quadratic, they're the exact same thing, just in different formats. And so from here, graphing this, um, the vertex would be at negative 2.5, negative uh, 5.25, so right over here, and then we got zero and one, which would be right up there. So we end up having a quadratic that roughly looks like that. And then finally, moving on to the last one, I think we're gonna deal with decimals here as well. So first let's get the C value. Um, that's going to be 0 and 2. The y-intercept is going to be 0 and 2. Then over here, let's take the standard form, complete it to, or uh, transform it to vertex form and in order to get the vertex. So A value is 1. Don't need to worry about taking anything out. So we could take that B value of negative 9 divided by 2, square it, negative 4.5 to the power two, 20.25. So we end up with x squared minus nine x plus 20.25 minus 20.25 plus two, like that. This would end up factoring into x minus 4.5 squared, right? Half of this and then the same sign. And then negative 20.25 plus two would give us negative 18. 0.25. So that's the vertex form of this quadratic. This is the standard form quadratic. That's the vertex form quadratic, but they are the same quadratic. So the vertex would be uh, positive 
and then we'll have negative 18.25 like that, right? And so making a quick sketch of this, we'll have um, positive 4.5, negative 18.25. That's where the vertex is, zero and two. That is where the y-intercept is. So it would be a quadratic that looks like that approximately. Okay, so all of these were fairly uh, similar quadratics. They all opened, um, opened up and so they had a minimum vertex, but that's not always gonna happen. In the next video, we're gonna have a bunch of different quadratics, whether opening up or down, and we're gonna have A values that are other than one so it's gonna add a little bit more steps to the completing the square process.